Hello, hello. I am all by myself. I don't have tech help right now. We are having a windstorm outside that is blowing everything everywhere. And dust and dirt is just everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. So those of you who don't know me, I'm Christelle with Christelle's Country Creations. And sorry um, if this is too close and you're seeing my face too much. Um, it takes a while. We live in the country, so it takes a while for the, the Wi-Fi to bring this up on my computer. Um, not me that's last night well I hope I'm live let me see if uh... oh there I am okay hello y'all sorry my husband is outside trying to make sure that the the corrugated metal and stuff don't blow away they uh if that happens out in the country the you know neighbors who have cows don't appreciate that so hey valerie hi lisa hi mom thanks for joining me we are doing a flamingo wreath tonight so i'm gonna pan down and we're just gonna get started because i'm not sure how long this is gonna take so let me pan this down Okay. Oh, thanks, Valerie. Right? I hope so. That would be awesome. That would be so awesome. Um, hey, Suzanne. I'm glad you found me. Okay. So, what I'm doing is um, a flamingo wreath, a mesh wreath, and I am just putting up all my ties here so they're easy to grab. Um, you might notice that it looks a little bit elongated and I did that on purpose. I kind of squeezed in and um, put this crossbar in to hold it because I wanted a little bit different look. I didn't want it to be exactly round. Um, so with that said, what I'm going to do, this is our mesh we're using tonight. Um, it's a thinner mesh. It's got, um, it's like a metallic blend deco mesh here. And we'll see how it looks in here. So how I start off is this bar that goes down to the middle is attached to one of these bars here. What I do is I go to the left and I take this first tie and that's where I'm going to start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gather this bit together and bring it in the middle. Then I've got my mesh and then I just drop it to the floor. That's the easiest for me anyway. So and then what I do is I put it in this first tie and you want to push it up against the bar in that armpit of that tie and you want to pull it tight and give a good twist. And then I take a zip tie. Thanks Valerie. Hey Alicia. Um, you want to take a zip tie and I just do this for extra protection so that my customers don't have to worry about their wreaths coming apart. Like if there's a windstorm like I've got going on out there today. So then that's all secure. So we're going to do like 10 to 12 inch poofs and we could measure each one, you know, 
like this. But what I do is I measure on my arm. So I pick a spot on my arm and I just revert back to that every time I go to a new tie. So I do that, go to the next tie, give a twist, and then fluff out the prior. And it puffs really nicely. And then we just repeat that process till we get through the whole wreath. First timer from Texas. Hey, Jennifer, thanks for coming in. I'm in Colorado. Now I'm a Colorado girl doing a flamingo wreath. We're gonna see how this turns out. So, and then you just poof that out. Grab, measure, go to the next tie. Open that up. If you notice yourself getting a little crazy and you know a couple of the poofs are a little bit bigger than the others, you're not really going to be able to tell. So you can always kind of look along this plane and straighten yourself back out. No one's going to notice a little bit of a difference because we put so much stuff in our wreaths, right? Um, you do want to make sure your sides are, when I'm pulling, I'm making sure this side and that side are um, even. Now the biggest thing you got to worry about when you're doing this part is that when you are putting this in the tie, you really get and you put this mesh tight up against that bar. I'd say that's probably when I teach classes um, that's probably the biggest thing that people miss is that they don't do it tight enough and then their boat, their puffs start to um, come out and change shape and stuff. So make sure you put that in there and you really only need to give it a good one and a half turns or whatever because we're going to be adding more twists in it with our ribbon and bows and whatnot. Pennsylvania. Wow. Hi, Melissa. Welcome. I've never really been to the, well, I guess I've been to Florida, but I've never been to like um, any other state on the east side, uh, east coast. I would love to. I've got a dream to go to um, uh, Acadia. I think it's up in Maine, Acadia National Park. <coughs> but y'all have such beautiful fall with all your colors. Out here in Colorado, we have different shades of yellow and brown in the fall. Okay, so we have come back to where we began. And I am going to go back into this tie. I'm not gonna untie it or anything. I'm just gonna do my measuring and place this in there like that. And what that did is that closed our circle or our oval, so it closed it. So then I'm gonna come up here to the closest tie, which is this one. <coughs> and I'm just gonna pull a little bit and get those ties out of the way. Come up here with a shorty. Can you see that? And then I'm just going to give a good twist. Okay, when everything's fluffed up, you won't even be able to tell that that's what we did. And then we're gonna repeat the process up here on the top with measuring and placing our mesh. So being from Texas, do you get a lot of dust storms down there? We are having one right now that I'm kind of worried that I might lose power and stuff, but there was like a wall of dirt that just came and it was crazy. It's still blowing out there. I don't know if y'all can hear it. If I was quiet for two seconds, you probably could. 
but uh, it pretty terrible. They say it's only 35 mile an hour wind with gusts coming, you know, a little bit higher than that. But I swear, it feels like so much more. Hey, Virginia. Good afternoon. I, uh, after my live last night, I, um, talked to one, my daughter that is from, um, that lives in Guam right now for about an hour and then I just crashed. So I didn't get to watch anybody else's live last night. And then I was busy catching up on the work on the farm with watering and, and things today. And so I didn't even get back online till after, um, two o'clock. So I'm sorry. Um, I tried to pin a couple lives um, that I missed to my page. So, at least I tried to sprinkle some love for you. So, you know, I don't know. I feel like I'm like so slow doing this. Um, and I know it's got to be boring to like watch this bit, you know. Where you're just like going in a circle. Okay. Okay, now we're coming back to the last one and we're gonna go into the last one like we did on the bottom row. So, we're gonna go into this one. So, um, and then we're gonna do a couple of things here, maybe. So my vision is what I'm what I'm thinking. I'm just going to pull these ties out so they're available, so they're not in there, in my way. So my what I think I want this um, wreath to look like is that I want it to stay kind of darker pink in the center, and then we're going to be putting in some ruffles on the edges. So I am going to, and I want my center filled in because I'm going to put some things in here. So um, I put these bars in and then I just continue with my mesh. So I'm going to measure. I'm going to turn this around so you can see. So measure, come down to this bar, and then I've cut um, some pipe cleaners short and I'm just going to wrap this around and I came out probably about three or four inches. I'm going to give some twists and I'm going to push those towards the back and then we'll fluff that out. If it'll let me. Okay. Fluff, fluff, fluff. We'll fluff some more later. So we're going to do the same thing. And I usually do about four, like four or five of them across that metal middle bar. Um, and these twists, when you do the twists on these uh, pipe cleaners, you want to do three or four because there's not going to be any more twists added on to that because we're not putting ribbon or anything in the center. Okay, a couple of more. Um, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Wow. Hi, Audrey. Hey, Melissa. Alicia. Um, are you measuring the same length when you start each new row? Yes. So I don't, I'm probably going a little bit fast and you can't see. Um, when after you do so many of these, you just kind of know when you pull it out. But I do measure to the same spot on my arm when I pull it out. Okay. So I'm going to do one more. And this one, see the bar here? This is uh, the end. 
So I'm going to bring it here and we're going to be cutting it. So I'm going to use a zip tie. Hey Shelly. Hi Peggy. Thanks for joining us. So I'm going to put a zip tie there and I'm going to be sure and cross under the middle bar and come up and around. That way it's adhered really securely. Pull that super tight, tight as you can. Clip off that bit. And then just give yourself a couple of inches and cut it off. Just like you cut someone's hair in a ponytail. Okay. So, it's not quite full enough in the middle. So, I'm going to add some, remember this bar that I had going the other way? I'm going to go across that bar too. So, you know, and you have this long bit left over, so I think that I'll have enough. So, I am going to go over to this side of the bar with my zip tie hanging over just a couple extra inches there bringing it into the zip tie it's squeezing hard you gotta make sure and pull that really good because you don't want that going anywhere like if someone puts it outside on their door or whatever you don't want it getting away from them so I'm just measuring there using another pipe cleaner going around the pipe cleaner that's on the bottom. Yes, I am um, talking, yes, hi Cheryl, <laughs> sorry. The uh, crossbars that I'm adhering to right now are the pipe cleaner ones, that's the ones I'm referring to, sorry. Okay, I think I have enough left for two more puffs, let's see. One, and then we'll do one more. Now with the ruffles that I'm doing, I'm not sure I'm gonna bring that color into the center because in my mind, I kind of wanted a little bit darker in the center. But you know how you, you know, have you ever done anything like, oh, I'm gonna do a, uh, let's say a cartwheel or something like that. And you know, you, you picture yourself doing it in your mind, right? And then when you attempt to do it, you completely fall on your face. That's what making a wreath is like, because you have like one vision in your head and how it turns out just sometimes just isn't, doesn't turn out how you thought it would. Okay, so we're back here. So see my pipe cleaner bar here. I'm going to stick this pipe cleaner under the metal bar around the middle center or the pipe cleaner bar bring this around pull that zip tie super tight okay so we've done that bit and then just pick a couple of inch or take a couple of inches away and cut and we've used almost all i probably could have done not one or two more poops even um, we've used almost all of the, because, uh, you know, if you're a wreath maker, you always have tons of that left. And I have like a whole tote over here full of nothing but them. And then you just stick this back underneath that poof. And let's fluff out these ones that I didn't do along the way. So we've got these three. And this one here. Okay, now that is nice, nice and full in the center. So it's given me lots of opportunity to put things on there that aren't gonna like fall through and it's bouncy so it'll hold things really nicely. So the next thing I'm going to do, and these are crazy color combinations I know but I think in my mind it's going to be pretty, but you just never know. So we're going to be putting ruffles in. 
and this is a 10 inch and the pink uh, metallic mesh that I put in here I bought a couple of years ago so you're not going to be able to get um, you can get this kind from like craft outlet and stuff but I, I bought it a couple of years ago I bought a whole lot of things for a good price so and this is another mesh it's a 10 inch mesh and it's got window pane um, like fabric bits going through it and I've cut it at about 20 inches and what we're going to do is we're going to lay it so the curl sides down and you're just going to straighten it out like that and you're going to start down here and you're just going to gather Gather, 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 all the way to the end. All the way to the end. And there'll be little stray bits and stuff sticking up, and I'm really trying hard not to, like, stop and, like, cut them every time I see them, but they drive me nuts. So then you have something that looks like this, and we're going to open it, or we're just going to go to a tie, you know, open that up. We're going to stick this in the tie. Again, you remember to push down to that bar and pull that tie tight so that that stays in there. Okay. And then you just fluff that bit back up and see how that makes kind of a cute little, cute little extra. Kind of neat, huh? So I'll show you one more time um, how to do it. So you just lay it roll side down so it'll straighten for you. Find your center and just walk it to the end. Now this is time consuming. So I actually pre-made all of them. Sorry. Uh, North Carolina. Hi, Robin. Yes, the middle, actually, uh, Cheryl, I actually have it to where it's elongated. And so I, I smushed the wreath a little bit and pulled it together and put those on there to hold it in the position that I wanted it in. Does that make sense? Hey, Kara. Hey, I'm so sorry I missed your live last night. I did pin it, though, on my, on my wall. Um, I was exhausted, man. Doing lives every day is really hard for me. So hard. So. Oh, gosh. Okay. Okay. So you just end up with these little bits that just add a little color. And I've... I've never done this before, but I pre-made all of them so you didn't have to sit and watch me like, like ruffle each one. So I've never done that before, but I just took a um, pipe cleaner and cut it to little bits and wrapped it around there. So in hopes of saving some time. So we'll just alternate um, colors here on the bottom row. Oh, you did a live shopping today? Where'd you go shopping? What's open in your area? Tried to go to Hobby Lobby the other day and they were not open and they would not let me in for nothing. I even said, please, <laughs> no, sorry. And we're just gonna alternate every, every other tie all the way around on this bottom row. And then we're gonna jump up on the top row. I'll bet doing that live when you were shopping was kind of fun because, you know, some of us still live in states that are on lockdown. So it's probably pretty, pretty awesome to be able to see someone go into a store. Okay, I'll try to fuss with them later. It's hard not to fuss with them when you're doing it. Oh, at Hobby Lobby. Oh, my. Oh, my gosh. Seriously? Did you stock up? 
Now, she, Kara, I don't know if you're reading the comments, but Kara went to Hobby Lobby and they had four aisles of Easter stuff at 80% off. Stock up for next year. Well, and a lot of this stuff you can always put in any kind of wreath. Oh, good. Good. Yay, everybody having fun. Cool. I wish I would have known. I didn't even get on the computer until after 2 o'clock today. I had chores to catch up on on the farm. Hadn't watered in a couple days. And out here in Colorado, like I'm sure in Texas, you don't water for a couple of days and things just start dying. So. jeez. <sighs> This stuff sticks to everything. It is, <laughs> it is terrible. Mesh is just so crazy. Oh, nothing open there. When are you going to open up, Cheryl? Do you know? Probably not for a while. Y'all have had just a horrible. Old Mervyn's commercials with the lady standing in the aisles, drumming her fingers on the glass, going, open, open, open. <laughs> yes. Yes. I did find a store open yesterday. Um, it was the at-home store. And I usually only shop their, shop their sales because they're kind of pricey. You know, when you're trying to make a wreath, you're trying to make it as affordable for people as possible. And, but I went in there and they did have some cute things. I picked up a few. Hey, Brenda. Thanks for popping in. Busy lady. All right. So those of you are just joining. These are just ruffles that were cut. They're 10 inch um, mesh cut at 20 inches long. Sometimes I do them longer um, I really don't ever do them shorter, but sometimes I'll do them longer if I want the rough, the ruffle to be like extreme, like really hardcore, you know? All right. So this is our last one on the bottom. And remember to make sure you're pushing it up against that bar, pulling these ties tight and giving a twist. And then you just fluff this out and bring the ends kind of together until it kind of looks how you want it to look. Okay, on the bottom. Woohoo! Crazy colors. I'm not sure this is going to turn out. We'll see. Okay. So now we're just going to start. We'll start at the top here and we'll just repeat the process going all the way. Oh, Cheryl, don't think that way. It, it will. We, we have to. Uh, we can't, we can't just, I don't know, we can't stay home forever. But having had the virus, I can tell you it is one horrible monster. Um, we're still trying to get over it. We can't, we get tired easily. You know, we're fatigued all the time. And it's been, what, March, let's see. I think March 10th, my husband came down with it, and March 12th, I did. So, um, you're in Albany, three hours from the city. Okay, yeah. Sherry, you're in New York. I hope y'all can start opening up, too. I hope you do. Um, I'm trying to keep up with comments, everybody. I'm, if I miss y'all, try to answer the question again. I mean, I'll answer it like afterwards. I'll type out something. Thanks, Brenda. Uh, I think this ruffle business is going quite quickly, actually. <laughs> Usually doing the, the ruffles takes quite a bit of time, but having them pre-done like this, heck, it's kind of going faster than I thought it would. Georgia Coast. Hi, Sarah. How are you, sis? Robin. Yes, I I agree. Um, Sherry, you're south of Buffalo. Um, 
yeah, come cold and flu season this fall, um, I'm not, you know, I'm scared. As if, if we got the, the virus again, like seriously, I, seriously, I don't know that we would fare well at all. Um, you know, we were having video, um, video calls with our doctor and stuff and, you know, we had shortness of breath and stuff and there, I was afraid to go. I went to the emergency room once and they let me come back home, but you can't have anybody with you is the deal. If I'm going to die, I'd rather die at home with my, my husband. <laughs> I don't want to die alone. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Maybe that's silly. I don't, I don't know. Okay. And you do, when you're doing this, you want to make both ties available because we still have ribbon to put in this thing. Ooh, look how puffy we are. Okay. Oh, hey, I want to do a shout out today. I think it's, um, nurses, uh, what is it? Um, nurses appreciation or first responder appreciation today. So thank y'all. If any of you are, you know, first responders or nurses or anything like that, you know, we are grateful to you and we're so sorry that you're having to go through such, you know, a hard time right now, but we sure appreciate that y'all are there. I have a couple of sisters in laws that are nurses and stuff so want to make sure I give a shout out oh thanks Brenda I know you're a busy lady thanks for stopping in hey Vicki you're a nurse for 24 years thank you for your service you know, I was in the military and people, you know, always thank me for my service and stuff. And I think sometimes, you know, first responders and stuff get overlooked unless something like this is happening. So thank you very much. Oh, and today's National Day of Prayer. Well, there you go. Let's all say a prayer for everybody dealing with this virus and all those businesses out there that are suffering and everything you know oh thank you Lisa hello Lisa and you're welcome you're welcome okay so this is our craziness so far that's our craziness so far oh my gosh the colors are <laughs> oh my gosh I don't know I don't know what I was thinking I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe I was delirious. Okay. So what we have here is all of our ribbons. Okay. I have, um, so I have two sets here. Okay. The pineapple and the lime green polka dot with black are going to go together. And then these two are going to go together. Now, uh, the, the pineapple ribbon and this ribbon were bought at AC Moore, which is no longer. So I don't, I don't know if maybe if you check the five one or three one five store or somebody to see if um, you can get it there. I'm not sure, but um, that's where I got those, and then these two were bought at Craft Outlet. So I um, dovetailed all my ends. And I've already done that ahead of time, so y'all weren't suffering watching me cut. But for those of you that are new that don't know how to do dovetails, I'm just going to show you. You fold your ribbon in half so that your ends are straight. And then you're just going to take an angle and cut away from you, just like that. And then that gives you a dovetail. So, and you just do both ends. I usually don't hold more than two or three ribbons together in my hand. Um, like I don't do like a whole bunch of them because then the, my lines don't stay straight. My, my dovetail looks kind of wompy. So same thing there. Pretty easy. 
Thanks, Suzanne. There's definitely, definitely some contrast going on in this thing. Uh, oh, thanks, Mom. Hey, Pam, Pam Smith there is my mom. She su supports me so good. And she uh, did a wreath kit, one of my wreath kits the other day, and her wreath turned out so good. I'm so proud of her. Okay, so now I have to decide which one I'm going to do into which one. So do I want to do that and this, or do I want to do this and this? Oh boy. Oh, jeez. Actually, I kind of like it this way. A little bit of black in both one. I think I'm going to do it like that. Okay, um, I've been making wreaths for a few, well, I, not like consistently, like I could always like do my own like crafting bit before my head injury and then um, I had a traumatic brain injury a few years ago and then after my brain injury, I couldn't do anything for years and then all of a sudden I like needed to. Um, to kind of help with the PTSD and stuff. So I've opened my business last year, but before that I would just make um, wreaths and give them to people. <laughs> and if you're a wreath maker, you know, you can't do that for too dang long. Oh, let me tell you what I'm doing here. Um, so you just put your one ribbon on top of the other. You find your center. Now you can fold it in half to find center, or you can just kind of guess a little bit. And then you ruffle that up and then you fold it in half and you want to almost go a little more than halfway. So it really gets that wire to bend. And then you just open up the tie, push it up against that bar and give a twist. Now I try not to fuss with my ribbons until, except for straightening out this bit. You want to make sure that these ends are nice and straight and that you pull these out um, because when I'm working it always they always like bend up and stuff so I don't tr I don't fuss with them until I'm done thanks Melissa thank you I'm not sure I'll like it at the end but we will definitely see my inspiration, I guess, was my husband has a couple crazy shirts that are, I'm like, we're in Colorado. It's embarrassing if you wear those here, you know, <laughs> but he's got a couple crazy shirts at his work. Um, they do like fun shirt Fridays and stuff like that um, sometimes. And so, you know, break up the monotony and have a little camaraderie. So... Yeah, it is, you know, because some of these wreaths, I mean, some of the smaller ones, you know, you can do for like $30, $40 and stuff, but a lot of these, you know, I don't know. I have been known to put, you know, over $100 just in materials in some of my wreaths, um, which, you know, I try not to do very darn often because that makes it an awful expensive wreath. So, oh, my fluffs. Okay. Oh, you're in Fountain, Colorado. Nice. Another Coloradan. So isn't this funny, Vicki, that here in Colorado I'm doing a flamingo wreath? But, you know, earlier, before we all got on lockdown, Hobby Lobby had such great fun flamingo stuff in their store and I was just like wow it's so cute I wonder if anybody here in Colorado would like these wreaths you know I was like well they're buying the stuff at Hobby Lobby so apparently they'll buy flamingo stuff so I don't know we'll see I try to sell mostly local um because shipping is so much money. Like, I sent out two wreaths today. So, surprise mom, if you're watching, I sent you a wreath today. 
And I don't think my Aunt Linda's on here, but sent her out a wreath too. One person, one of them lives in, um, like near Omaha, and the other one lives in uh, Oklahoma. So I'm in Colorado. Cost me, it's about, it was $75 to mail them out. You know, something about, and I should have done FedEx instead of the post office. Tons, I'll bet, Sarah. Lots of flamingo stuff out there, huh? I should have sent it FedEx, I think, but I was in a hurry. Oh, well that's good, Mom, thanks. Thanks for the feedback. And then you should know that, um, you know, the end product that you see tonight on the video may change from the picture I post tomorrow. Because I'll, I'll tweak it and stuff until I'm happy with it. Sometimes I add extra stuff or I take things off and move them around. Um, with that barbecue wreath. I don't know if any of you are watching with the barbecue wreath the other day. I took those signs off like three times and moved them. Because they just were not... They weren't right. They just were not right. And it just was driving me crazy. Thanks, Shelly. Yes, FedEx is cheaper. And I just haven't... Um, I'm not comfortable going to the FedEx place yet. So... With my brain injury, I have a hard time going to places I haven't been before. I'm kind of like, you know, I don't want to have a panic attack and things like that. So I'll just have to have, like, somebody go with me the first couple of times until I'm comfortable going. But then after that, I think I'll definitely start using FedEx because USPS is just real expensive. Oh, thanks, Sarah. I thought the, yeah, the barbecue wreath, I did like the way that turned out, actually. I thought it was fun. Now, I may trim these ribbons. I didn't tell you, but I made them all 13 inches because, well, I either make it 12 or 13 inches. It just depends. So it depends on how much extra stuff I put in there, but I was planning on putting, like, a few extra things in there, so I wasn't quite sure and if it's too long you can go through and trim it if it's too short well you're just out of luck right so I thought well if I have to I'll go through and trim them all so will FedEx come to me like I live in the country like out of it I mean they deliver to me but does it cost more money to have them like come to you, to me? I guess I don't know. All the behind the scenes business stuff, I'm not real great. Like if I could just make the wreaths and somebody else could do everything else, that that would be like my dr my dream job, you know. <laughs> but I suppose everybody feels that way. Okay, so we've done the bottom. We're going to jump up here to the top. This is a good, um, this is a good, uh, good ribbon. It's nice and, you know, when you try to bend it and stuff, it's pretty thick ribbon. It's good quality. Laura Jean, the Laura Jean's wreath room, went shopping at AC Moore for a bunch of people that are in her design group. And she picked those up for me and sent them to me. So she was such a sweetheart to do that. Really? Thanks for the tidbit, Lisa. I'll try to do that. Okay. Okay. 
getting close to getting this bit done and then we're going to start um, adding stuff. This is so fluffy. It's so firm. It's like a firm mattress. It's really, really going to be kind of a thick one. And then I had to order more boxes today. You know, boxes are expensive too. Everything's just expensive. I shouldn't complain. Angela, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm a little nervous because we're doing so many colors and so much craziness. We'll see if it turns out. Never know. 50-50 chance. Uh, this one might be 60-40. I don't know. We'll see. pretty wild colors. So today I was trying to figure out what I'm going to do for tomorrow's because you know I'm, I'm doing this seven day challenge thing so through Sunday I have to do videos. Sunday? Saturday? Sunday? Um, I think it's Sunday. Um, so and I'm trying to let you know what I'm doing So you can decide, you know, if you want to pop in and watch or whatever. Um, Sarah, uh, here they're always pink and green with the blue teal. Yes. And I wanted to deliberately not do teal in this one. I have another flamingo that I'm going to do that I am going to add the teal to. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to try that with the teal. That'll be great. Thanks, Sarah. That'll be great. Oh, what was I saying? I don't even remember. My brain is... Oh, anyway. So, yeah. Um, so, I try to let you, you know, know what's coming so you can decide if you want to watch or not or if it's something that'll interest you. And there's a lot of people doing a lot of lives lately and... And so a couple of them, I've been like, oh, I was going to make one like that. Oh, oh, I was going to make one like that. And like someone did, uh, oh, I think it was Vicky today did a strawberry one. So I was like, oh, I was going to do a strawberry one. I don't want to do a strawberry one now, you know. And so I'm like, what is nobody else doing? You know, just to kind of, for the, you know, some of us are trying to watch each other's lives and stuff, you know. And I'm just trying to make it so it's not like, oh, great, I'm watching another one of these. Um, that's a good idea, Sarah. And actually, I did think about doing that. So I have a couple of options, and I, you know, I was going to say, hey, do you want me to do this or this? So maybe at the end we will, if what I show you, like, doesn't look like it's going to be that interesting. Um... But there's somebody, Val, out there, I think she was on earlier, um, she does amazing wreaths. Um, she's Val's Visions is, is what her um, site's called. She does amazing job. Well, doing a grapevine, I love doing grapevine wreaths, and my grapevine wreaths do really well. And um, so, I don't know, I might try a grapevine, but... It's really hard to get the camera because I have to have it in front of me. So, I don't know. Okay. What does this... Okay. Where's the... Okay. It's elongated, so we got to go this way. So, all right. Okay. I guess it's not horrible. All right. So, now, let's see if I can get this a little closer. Okay. So, now... 
I've got this flamingo here that's a little, it's lighter than the pink. And I may put some more green and black in here. I'm not sure yet. I did want the center to be a little darker. So all I did here was I drilled a hole in his leg to add wire here and then I put wire here. Can you see that in here? So I want him on the left a little bit here like this. Now I want him kind of going in just a little because I did make another bow. So I usually put this on the wall so it's a little bit easier. So and then I was going to put that there, I think. Um, and let's see. And then put the bow kind of down lower to help elongate this even more. And then I made another bow. I made another bow because I thought I might put another one kind of up here. Oh, I don't know if you guys are getting like the... You guys can't see this very well, can you? Can you see where I'm going? Oh, we got the pineapple. Hold on. Gotta put the pineapple in here somewhere about here. Oh boy. Hold on. Let me see if I can cut this. Ah, this is really thick. Gosh, you hear that? <laughs> it's pretty thick stuff. So in between these two, I think, kind of coming out like that. Then I do have a few of these that we're going to put around the outside and things maybe. And I thought about putting this in there, but I don't think we're going to need it. I do have some of these, which are fun. And I may put towards the bottom and up here towards the top so that we have a little bit more of an elongated feel. It is really hard to create in front of all you guys. <laughs> okay, so you like it? Okay, Debbie, you like it on the side. Magnolia on deco mesh instead of grapevine. Huh, nice, nice idea. Yeah, I was kind of afraid of that, Sarah. Thanks. So, and once it's all together and things are in their spots, like it won't be so quite as poofy, but let me start adhering things and seeing where we're at. All right, now this bit is not that fun to watch, I know. Am I too close? So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these wires because I think that's where I want the flamingo. Unless I do, I could bring him up more and put the bow, kind of cover up his feet a little bit. And then I could still do that other. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. Bring him up and over a little bit. Wait a minute. Ah, good thing I looked, because my elongated part needs to be, here's the center. So I did not have it turned exactly how I want. There, we, that is better. That is a lot better. Okay, so I'm gonna put him right here. So all I'm gonna do is follow, bring these wires down to the first metal bar. 
Second bow is covering up a lot. Okay. Thanks, Karen. Oh, Sarah, you're so sweet. Okay. Find. Wrap around. Okay. And don't pull. There's kind of a fine. You got to pull tight, but you don't want to pull too tight because you don't want to smush it in there. And then I want him still kind of, so it has to set like that. Do I want him? No. No, I do want him on the left side. So, and then I'll take these wires and go down to the bar too. And adhere that. And when there's so much stuff, it's hard to get in between all the fluffiness. It's a good thing I do all this drilling and stuff ahead of time. <laughs> okay, so now the flamingo is in, and I may put something else there. Let's see. If the bow is down there, do I want him higher? See, these are all the things that. Uh, I think wreath makers go through, you know, and sometimes it's just trial and error and figuring it out. Well, I'll leave them there. And then we'll put this one on here. And all I did was I drilled little holes and then wrapped some wire in here on all four corners to make sure it's good and secure and it's not going to come off. And I think that I'm going to put... I'm going to put that right there. Yeah. Okay, let me turn this. I know this bit has got to be so boring. But this is like the most stressful part for me. Because <laughs> I'm like, okay, hurry up and try to make a decision here. You got to get going. Come on, girl. Hey, Judy. Thanks for joining. Okay. Okay. So, I'm sorry, y'all. It's, I just need to move it to get these wires down there how I want them. And I'll probably just adhere to while I'm here with you all and then I will add the other two later. Okay. Boy, are you guys getting dizzy? I hope not. I hope I'm not making you dizzy or sick. <laughs> Twisting this baby around. But anyways, these are the dilemmas that wreath makers, you know are doing <laughs> behind the scenes that you don't see and you don't see the ones that we uh, toss out or tear apart and redo and all right I'm gonna take this big bow and put it through and we want it more towards the bottom because I really want that elongated look. So I might even go a little lower. Let's see. Seems like my computer is not, the lag time isn't as bad um, as it usually is. Maybe the wind is helping carry the... <laughs> We're having a windstorm here, y'all, like really bad. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it was like the dust storm of the Great Depression era or whatever, you know. 
it was pretty bad out there. Okay, so when you pull your bow, you want to pull it, but you don't want to pull it so it's like sunken in too badly. But it does need to be firmly attached to two different areas, usually. Yeah. I'll use, well, I will anyway. Um, I'll attach it to two areas. So that it doesn't move. So I'm always afraid during shipping and things like that. And I go to craft shows. Um, usually quite a lot, I guess. Well, I've been to like four or five in my life, I guess. Um, oh, which wreath is my favorite? Oh, boy. Well, my favorite, my favorite is one that nobody's bought yet. So, um, it's actually, it's on my Etsy. And I think I actually have it on my, my page for, um, like, as my picture. Um, this is my happy place. Um, it's a, a wreath that I made that's, I don't know, it's kind of different. You got to be a different cat to kind of like it. Um, but, okay, so that's what we're doing there. Can you see? We're getting long. So, and then I think I do want this here. My pineapple. Yeah, I do want the pineapple there. So I should just do it and glue it. Right? If you think that's what you want, just do it. Okay, I'm going to do it. I am putting the hot glue on and making sure that I get it into a tie because it doesn't always stick to, ow, the mesh very well. So, okay. I committed. I committed to the pineapple. Yeah, I committed. So, okay, that's going over his foot. Okay, so I don't know about this bow that I was going to do up here. That, it just might be too much. So I don't think we'll do that bow. Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> um, but anyway, if you, if you look at my um, page, there's one, it's, it's kind of purple and it has a sign with a bird on it and it says, um, uh, this is my happy place because actually, yeah, um, having a, a traumatic, and I, I don't mean to keep saying, but you need to know where I'm coming from. Having a traumatic brain injury, going through a lot of therapy for my PTSD and stuff, my happy place is like a garden area and, um, it's like a like a willow tree is like my favorite. But anyway, so that is my favorite um, wreath. And I have it, I do have it for sale because I was just like, I, I don't need 15 wreaths <laughs> at my house. So, okay. So I'm kind of liking that. I do have a few more of these. And we can't forget the second. Um, when I'm when I'm building my wreaths. Um, hello, Miguel. Oh my gosh, long time no see. Um, when I'm building my wreaths, you don't just want to put everything on the top. You want to put things in different layers and things. So I will bring like some of these into, you know, the next layer down and things too. And you don't just have to put things where, um, where there's a tie. Like sometimes I see people like only putting things where there's a tie. Try to like think outside the box a little bit 
and don't put it where there's a tie. Put it in between, like in the middle where there's not a tie and see how that looks. Okay, y'all, I'm trying to get trying to get you like the main idea, but guaranteed that I'm going to change it up probably a little bit before you see it tomorrow. And I really did love these and I'm going to incorporate them somehow. I've used them in a few wreaths and I just love the effect. So they're so wispy and palmy. So I may that it's finding a spot for them. And there's two. And I'm over here cutting and I'm trying to keep my receipts, y'all, because that's how I know how much to charge for a wreath. Because I have a little cup that I put all the receipts to things that I put into my wreath. So, so I put that there. So I want to come down here, get somewhere. Oh, and I'm probably right in the way. Just off of here. Okay, y'all cannot see what I'm seeing for sure, I know. It looks like a big mess <laughs> sitting on this table. Laura, I don't know how you guys all do it on the table because this is hard <laughs> to do it on the table. And I'm actually gonna walk around to the other side real quick. You guys are good. That's what I'm afraid. I wanna do a grapevine wreath for you all, but I don't know if I can do it on a table. I have to do it up on a wall, and I don't know how to do that without, um, without y'all like having to see the back of my head or my back. So I just don't know. So I can't see your comments guys or anything for a minute okay I want to do something no I don't my husband said these were he asked me what they were well never mind it's probably not in good taste sorry I brought it up I shouldn't have brought it up okay so this is what I'm thinking. I wonder if I could actually put it on the wall and show you guys. I know the green stuff isn't glued in yet, but everything else is in. Can you see that? I don't have a cameraman today, so I don't know what you can see and what you can't. Can you see? No, I still can't see the top. Okay, hold on. There's so much stuff behind me, you probably can't see. Sugar skulls, that would be cute. I'm gonna try and put it over here on the wall because I can't even see it. So hold on, let me see if I can get it on the wall and then show you. Oh boy. Okay guys, hold on. Hang with me. It's lopsided. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> it's okay. I said I was trying to make a fun one, so I am making a fun one. So, what do you, <laughs> what do you think? I'll probably 
do I don't I don't know if I'll change it <laughs> I'm kind of like it is totally crazy but I don't know what do you think give me some hearts if you like it and some mad faces if you don't Ugh. Thanks, guys. You like it that way, too? Thanks, Melissa. Yeah. I may, I may keep it like that. I may keep it like, okay, who's my, like, Florida people or East Coast? Sarah, are you still on? You were talking about the flamingo wreath earlier and stuff. You think someone from the East Coast or Florida would like that? Or heck, I don't know, maybe somebody in Colorado wants to put it on their door. <laughs> okay, y'all, I'm going to turn you back around. I'm so sorry for the shaky hands. Let me get you back in my clip here. Okay. Can you see me? I'm a mess today. Sorry, I have, oh my gosh. That makes me seasick. I'm so sorry I moved y'all around like that. Hang in there. Tennessee girl here. Hey, Katie. What do you think, Sarah? Do you think somebody would like that or it's not quite like the colors are kind of different, I know. But it's so crazy. I don't know. It's so crazy. I think I'm digging it. Thanks, Suzanne. Okay. So let's move on just a little bit. Let me see if I can. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's so helpful when my husband's in here. So let me tell you what I'm thinking for tomorrow. So I've got that. Can you see it better if I do that? Probably not. So I have this sign. This gnome. And these are some of my ribbon choices. They're a little different, right? This is different. And I think I'm I'm thinking about doing it, you know, in a grapevine wreath with a lot of greenery and a few flowers. But I'm not sure I can do a grapevine on you like the gnome, yay! No one would know. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> Nice. Okay. So, gnome. Do I need to turn this way? Uh, so, I've got gnome. Okay, so that's one idea um, for tomorrow. But that would be in a green, in a grapevine. So, let me put him over here and tell you my second idea. Well, actually, y'all, I have so many ideas. Um, we could stick to the Islander theme. So I found this. So this would be in a mesh net, mesh, a mesh wreath, or a swag. You know, we can do, we can switch it up a little bit and do something else. I've never done a swag. I could figure it out. Because I have a great teacher, Laura Jean's wreath room. I'm a loft at. Um, so, I don't know. Do you like the, what, Alicia? A high tea wreath. Like, what do you mean, like high tea? 
like with some like plastic teacups and stuff. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Gosh dang. Okay. How's that? Is that better? You guys don't need to see me. You just need to see there. Ah, uh, Sarah's in for the mermaid wreath. Both Sarah's. Oh, that's one Sarah. Sorry. Oh, jeez. I'm so terrible at this camera business. Okay. Or there's one more option that I've been wanting to do, and I'll just put it out here. So here's the mermaid. How about a watermelon? Or the grapevine gnome. So what do you think? Those are... I have lots of other things I could do, but let's just leave it to those three. So, tell me what you think. So, Melissa thinks the gnome in a grapevine. Oh, she really wants to have me uh, hats and teacups. I think that would be cool, Alicia. Keep an eye out for those things. If you see them, let me know where you see them, and I'll get some. Oh, Suzanne, you never seen a swag being made before? Um... I've never made one. We could give it a shot, right? Shelly's a sucker for gnomes. Mermaid, gnome. Oh my, you know, I'm going to have to go through and like count and, and see who wants, who wants what. Sarah's still a mermaid. Okay. Well, just tell me what you think. And uh, I just thought these guys were so cute. Um... So, and then we'll decide, and so I'll be doing one of these tomorrow. I may not, if I'm going to do a mesh wreath, I'll probably just do the bow or the accent tomorrow. If I'm doing the grapevine wreath, I might just start off with doing the base, showing you how to build your base on a grapevine wreath. So we may not get through the whole thing tomorrow, but then you won't have to be on here forever. You know what I'm saying? Sarah's still voting mermaid. Ah, mom wants the watermelon one. Oh, nice, Sarah. Cool. All right, y'all. I won't take up any more of your time tonight. My tech guy just walked in who's a lot better at moving that camera around than I am. So, anyway, I won't take up any more of your time tonight. Thank you for stopping in. If you wouldn't mind sharing and liking my page, um, it helps um, my business to grow, and I appreciate y'all so much. And be safe, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.